Some of you who may be a little new to preparing websites might be struggling a little bit as to how to prepare your logo to be imported properly at the right size for your website. And so in this lesson, we're going to show you how to do that in Photoshop. Let's open up Photoshop and uh, let's go to File and Open and let's navigate uh, on our hard drive to the place where we are storing our logos. Now, in an ideal world, what we're looking for are files that have been properly prepared uh, by a graphics designer uh, in perhaps a logo kit that was prepared for your client or for your own organization. And those, if properly prepared, are going to show up as an EPS file, a file that was most likely created in Adobe software called Illustrator. And those are usually saved as an EPS file. And the advantage of having this in an EPS file is it is a vector format. And the advantage to a vector format is that based on the one file, you can open that up and size it as high as you want. You can size it anywhere from a small logo to appear on your website, or you can make it billboard size, and it's not going to lose any quality when you do that. And uh, so that's what we're looking for. And for this example, we'll open up uh, one of these EPS files. And you'll notice that Photoshop asks you to prepare some of the parameters that you want as you open this file. First of all, because we know that we're going to be using it on the internet, and the logo will show up on screens rather than be used in a print format, what we want to do, first of all, is change the mode from CMYK that usually comes by default when something is prepared in Illustrator. We want to change that to RGB so that it will uh, look its best on RGB screens. Now, the resolution for video internet use, we usually set that to 72, so you might as well go ahead and do that. And then we'll notice that we're also given the option to decide how big we want that file to be. Now, for internet use, especially for logos, you wouldn't likely ever uh, want to see a logo on your website to be much more than about 300. That would be about the biggest. However, as we create this Photoshop file from the EPS format, we might as well go ahead and make it a fairly large file. We could even make it like 3,000 pixels in width. And then as we save this Photoshop file, in the future, we will be able to come back to this Photoshop file and just work with it rather than having to open up one of the uh, EPS files and uh, setting the parameters each time. What we can do is just now open up this Photoshop file, resize it to whatever size we want easily, and uh, save that. Okay, but now we have a very large file, much larger than we would ever need for our website. But let's work with this file. We'll notice that uh, behind our logo is what looks like, um, oh, just gray and white uh, tablecloth. <laughs> but really what this is showing to us in a Photoshop file is that uh, we're working with a transparent background. And this is usually the way we would want it to be as we try and import it into our website. We want to have that transparency so that any design or color that we may have up on our website will nicely show underneath our logo. If we filled this uh, background in with a particular color, that color may or may not work with our website. And so we want to leave it as neutral as possible and leaving it transparent is usually the best method. Now there'll be exceptions to that rule. There may be times when you want to add a background color in Photoshop before you import that into your website. Perhaps we'll show you how to do that before we're all done. But for now, let's uh, save this file maybe five or six different ways so that we have these readily available to us whenever we need to import them to our website. First thing I might do is expand our borders just a little bit. You'll notice that uh, the way the file comes in from Illustrator, the edges of the file are very extreme, right up to the very pixels of the logo itself. And you might want to give yourself a little breathing room there, depending on the design of your website. Sometimes it'll work better just to bring it in like this. But uh, usually what you want to do is have a few pixels of breathing room on your uh, logo. So what we'll do is we'll go up to our Crop tool. And I know that sounds a little funny to go to the Crop tool to make your space larger, but that is something that you can do with the Crop tool as well. So with that selected, we can now go to any edge of our uh, Photoshop project and just start sliding it back with our mouse. And we can do the same at the top, same at the bottom, 
and also on the right hand side and that can be very helpful with uh, most of the website designs okay and then what we would probably do at this point is save the Photoshop file so let's do that and what I'll probably do at this point is first of all delete any spaces that might be in the file name some uh, templates including rocket theme don't like it when you have spaces in, in your file name so let's get rid of all of those spaces if you wanted to keep a space in between uh, certain words just use an underscore instead and uh, rocket theme and most importers would accept that fine there's a character there but what I'll do is insert the width uh, that it is naturally there so that next time I go to work with the file I'll know how large it is to start with and we had set that at 3000 pixels okay so now we can save that and now we have a Photoshop file ready to go that has the transparent background and the logo at full resolution. Now, if we know that we're going to need this logo for a variety of purposes, perhaps in a video, perhaps to show as a layer on some of our images that we might save to either uh, YouTube or Facebook, as well as uh, being a logo on our website, we might want to save this in a variety of of different sizes so that we have them readily available and we don't have to go through the process of resizing our logo every time we need to do something with it. So what I would do at this point is uh, first of all perhaps save one at this size because I know that if I use a, a logo inside some of my After Effects templates for example many of the scenarios would require a very large uh, logo to start with and it's so easy to resize once you're inside After Effects anyway. So I like to have one file that's saved at the 3000. What I'll do is hit the Control Shift S to save as and then go down and in the save as type I will go and choose the PNG file extension. And the reason why we like to save as a PNG is because this preserves the transparency which is so important so vital to uh, many of the uses of a logo okay and what we might want to do is create a new folder here and say something like uh, so we'll save that PNG asks you to confirm the type of compression the default one is fine and then we'll quickly resize these maybe we'll grab one at uh, 2000 and uh, remember to s change the save as type from the default Photoshop to the PNG file. And then just uh, change the uh, file name from 3000 to 2000. Hit save. Hit OK. And uh, just repeat that process for the various sizes that you want. I'll do one at 1000. Change to PNG and change that to 1000 and uh, none of these are still really the right size for your website um, I suppose the 1001 could possibly be used in some scenarios but um, really most logos that appear on a website would probably be more something like Oh, at the most 500. Let's try one at 500 pixels in width. Save that. But then we get into the real sizes uh, that will most likely be used in most cases. And uh, let's make one at 250. So resize that again. Change it to 250. Repeat the process. And uh, I might also do one at 200 and uh, say one at 150. And then I'll have a nice variety of banner logos for my client that I can use in a variety of different scenarios. Now, uh, to the uninitiated, it may look as though we have made this logo so small that nobody would ever see it if we brought that into our website. Actually, this is a kind of a misrepresentation. Photoshop resizes it to give you an idea of how much smaller it is now compared to uh, when you first started working with the file, but is not really representative of the actual pixel size of the image. And we can zoom in on this file quite a bit before we start to see it getting pixelated. Let's see, right there is about the actual size. Okay, just before we close up, I want to do maybe show you how to actually add a color background to the logo if indeed you need to do that. 
what we would do is first of all go over to our layers palette and add an extra layer here just by clicking on this little symbol here and that adds a layer actually by default it adds a layer above ours what we want to do is put it underneath our logo so we just drag that so that layer 2 is now below layer 1 and now uh, with layer 2 selected and you can do that just by pointing to any layer you can select a layer we would go over to our color picker here just click on it once and that opens up a color picker and the way that we use this color picker is there's actually several different ways that we can choose our color one will notice by sliding this bar up we get a general idea of the color range that we want but then we can also use this little circle tool here to fine-tune that color that we want and when you've got something that you like, actually, let's not do red because we've got a little red uh, maple leaf. Let's try and find something else that might work here. Maybe a nice yellow. Not sure that that will actually work, but it'll give you an idea of how to add a background anyway. And when you've got a color that you like, you'll notice that the little spot color does change. And then we can just go up to our tool up here that looks like a little bucket. Actually, as you hit the little down arrow there, you'll see that there are other options here you could use a gradient tool if you wanted your background color to move from one color to another or from one brightness in a color to a darker version of that same color well you could use a gradient tool we'll show you how to do that in another tutorial for now let's just uh, use the paint bucket tool and we can just go over and just point anywhere in the file itself click with your mouse once and that would fill up your file and then you could save that uh, as a separate file and, uh, and have a logo ready to go with a preferred colored background. All right, and uh, just one more tip uh, that I'll leave you with, and that is when you go to close Photoshop at this point, uh, let's just do this. Let's just go up and hit the X key. It'll ask you, do you want to save the Photoshop file? And what it's asking you to do is, do you want to save it as it is at this point? because you've made changes since the last time we saved it. You remember that we saved our Photoshop file uh, with a transparent background at a width of 3000 pixels. And we wanted to kind of preserve that file so that we always had that to go back to rather than having to try and find or define the EPS file again. So if we were to hit yes at this point, what we would be doing is overwriting that nice large 3000 pixel size Photoshop file and instead be saving this as a very small logo with a colored background. And uh, so at this point, you would just hit no, you don't want to save it again and overwrite that file. And that way you'll preserve your original file. All right, well, I believe that that does it for how to prepare logos for your website using Photoshop.